Okay, here we have lesson 2A. It is the basic discussion of what big data is and how it's measured. And I remember when I first gave these lectures, this was probably the most eye-opening lecture because people weren't used to this in around 2013 to the concept of big data. Now you all know it, it's a hackneyed and unfortunately most of the, a lot of the interesting documentation of big data is rather old plots because people just don't plot big data anymore because it's obvious. We all know it's big data. And uh, so I have been not able to uh, update some of the nicest and prettiest examples. People don't spend a lot of time making pretty plots for things which they think is well known. And they won't get much credit for, which is probably true they won't get much credit. However, it's worth noticing the big data deluge has actually become the deep learning deluge. And we don't have those deep learning plots yet. We need to get them. And so big data is a fact, and it's agreed. It's not really controversial. How best to process it and things like that is still uncertain. Deep learning is evolving very fast. It's like a big data was in probably 2008 or something. But it has so many successes, it's staggering. I never dreamt it would be this successful. I really fell behind by missing out on that change. Anyway, here we are, lesson 2A, a broad-based coverage of big data and the data deluge. Thank you. So here's the, here is this old, seems to come from a talk from Oracle in 2010. That was when I was first uh, discussing big data in conferences. And it told you what happened in a minute. We had in those days 600 new videos uploaded, and um, 20,000 posts on Tumblr, and 98,000 tweets, and things like that. 100 new LinkedIn accounts. So it was things were happening all over the place: Flickr, WordPress, Firefox, Search, emails, blogs, domains. Everything was Pandora music. All of these numbers are much bigger now, but as I mentioned in one of an earlier, it's actually quite hard to get these basic pretty pictures updated because people have moved on. They don't discuss basic big data any longer. Still, they're impressive. Here's another version focused on actually US government data. Here's US Geological Survey. Here's the global IP. Uh, um, Traffic from Cisco, and it's sort of interesting. It's measured in 225 exabytes per month. It says per year you have zettabytes of uh, IP traffic, and that goes nicely with the zettabytes of data stored. Here's the Department of Energy, and here remember we have 15 petabytes of a year is is some measure of the amount of data from the Large Hadron Collider. <coughs> here is the global. Wearables, remember this is meant to be 25 to 50 billion by 2020. And we're according to this at the moment. Well, actually, see, these numbers are not consistent. Cisco has a larger number, but it, anyway, it's 2020, they make it as 20 billion. Um, so what do we have here? EOS this is the, um, that's a classic um, Earth science storage from satellites. Here we have the NIH explosion coming from gene sequencing. Um, we have, uh, that's here and here, this is NIH, this Cancer Institute. Uh, here we have uh, Internet of Things. So here's the Internet of Things. Oh, sorry, this is wearables, which is a subset of the Internet of Things. Obviously, Internet of Things lives in cars. Lives in um, street sign, street uh, monitors, and so on. Lives in homes. Uh, here we have uh, NOAA, uh, the climate and weather of people, and here's their data increasing. And here we have DoD, the drones pouring out data. What does it say? It's 43 terabytes per data per drone. That's because cameras are digital. They take uh, their data. And they get more, just Moore's Law says those uh, little CCDs get smaller every every year, and you get more pixels and therefore more data from your drone. Um, so this is a pretty interesting uh, um, graph from Scality.com.
This slide here updates the previous one with another year. Well, actually, it has two solid years because this comes from 2016. Two complete years going up to sort of, I don't know, 3.3 million photos per day. Quite impressive number showing um, rapid rise in uh, WhatsApp, the light blue. Um, Snapchat is possibly slowing a little. The messenger is bursting in the sea, under the scene, and Instagram is uh, not so doing so well. Uh, and Facebook is plugging away the core Facebook. Um, and then, and um, of course, uh, it's really quite striking to see how the world of photography has changed due to the incredibly impressive cameras they now put on smartphones and the way anybody uses their smartphones. And so previously, you needed your um, single lens reflex or what have you. Camera was a large, chunky thing. Now you can get comparable quality with as many pixels uh, on a large thing sort of this size as you could on a, uh, as you now can on a smartphone. So. Implicit in this image growth is incredible technology growth. The IoT for this being the cameras on smartphones. All right. And as a companion to, to the previous slide on photos per so, from the social media side, here we have the actual messages themselves. I recently got a WeChat uh, login because I was told everybody in China uses WeChat. And so as I was in China and they wanted to talk to me, uh, we ha I had to install WeChat, which actually works perfectly smoothly. Fine, a fine system. But if we look here, you can see uh, WeChat is somewhat below Messenger. Facebook Messenger has a more rapid increase, and WhatsApp, which is the largest of these uh, systems. Uh, to an old fashioned person like me, uh, the interest in messaging as opposed to email, it's a sort of curious, because email is not that different from messaging. And yet, it's an email. I, might, I actually don't have a graph of the growth of email, but I do not think it's growing uh, significantly as the uh, messaging systems are. And I'm not quite certain why you couldn't have an email system that was as effective as these messaging systems on messaging. So anyway, that's a, that's a sort of slightly different. And meanwhile, anyway, this is just an example of the digital technology and the digital transformation changing the way people live their lives. Okay, I get frustrated because I cannot um, get data which uh, produces these nice plots of images as a function of time, because people no longer give that base data. Mary Meeker in her 2019 report does give some sort of different ways of looking at it. That's why you see some of the old data, a lot of the old data, is because I can't get the new version of that data. People, I think it's because big data is accepted, so people don't produce base plots anymore of that. Um, so here we have just. Um, Plots of numbers which are driving imaging. Active smartphones, here we are at uh, 3 billion. Notice it's leveling off. Uh, the power and storage of, of phones here, the different models of the iPhone, XXS7 and so on. Um, here we have the uh, number of Wi Fi networks globally, up to over 500 million. And here we have the cellular. Data traffic, uh, nearly um, 25 exabytes. So these are the driving um, factors which are going to imply lots of images. Now, the f uh, if you try to make it even more precise, here is an estimate of the total number of annual new photos taken. This uh, and it's done as a function of time, and it's not. It's only gone up a factor of less than two between 2013 to 17. Maybe it is a factor of two to now. Over here somewhere. Maybe we're here now. 
Uh, and here we have Instagram, the monthly act active users through 2018, and is of course soaring, and they're producing lots of images. So um, images, are, I mean, the field of imagery is amazing. It's so changed from the time when everything was measured in shoeboxes, and was the Kodak unit for number of photos a household would have as a shoebox. That's where their old photos were kept. But uh, that's different nowadays. So, previous slide was images, now we're on uh, YouTube. If you remember the old Oracle 2010 talk, YouTube was um, 25 hours of, uh, uploaded every minute, so it's now up to 100. And in fact, on September the 1st, 2016, 300 hours per minute. Uh, we, I have some data on that elsewhere. And um, say 25 hours of somewhere around here. So you can even see that's about right. That's what that previous plot said. So this is a this is video. It's a dramatic equivalent to a dramatic dramatic number of images. So here is the YouTube statistics on September 1, 2016. One of the few places I found that have real real numbers. Here's the 300 number. Uh, number of languages 54. The user submitted video with the most views, which is some well known video called Charlie Bit My Finger. And that was 829 million at that state. And it is now 854 uh, million. <coughs> 3.25 5 billion hours of video view per, per month. And over 10. Thousand videos have generated over a billion views, and 30% of the viewers are from the U.S. So, lots and lots of wonderful, huge numbers. Um, well, here is um, the zettabyte plot, and um, zettabyte is um, what well, is uh, a million petabytes, and um, the largest science is maybe 100 petabytes, which is um, this total here. It's a tiny fraction. It's total there, which is maybe 10. Well, in 2018, it must be up to 15 zettabytes. So it's a. This is a tiny fraction. I don't even know how many there. There are four zeros here. Five times 10 to the minus five. Tiny number. We can make it a bit bigger by making a percent point oh oh five percent. So this is Z I mean we have a plot of Cisco network bandwidth which is zettabytes of transfer. Here's an interesting plot showing what supports this. Um, here's the global data growth going up in petabytes. Um, and it's millions of petabytes, which is zettabytes, as far as I know. Because um, the data in the digital universe is zettabytes. Um, and here we have the cost. Storage is getting cheaper. And that, of course, is allowing us to, to store the increasing amount of data. All right, after some years without much data on the amount of big data in the world, uh, Mary Meeker's Internet Trends has actually a 2018 chart, which is pretty spectacular. Goes through 2024 and estimates 163 zettabytes. Notice back in 2005, it was a tenth of a zettabyte. And here we have these. Um, Minus zettabytes we have today, remember, seven zettabytes, a terabyte per person. Uh, so um, we're about, um, I don't know, 24 uh, terabytes per person up here. Pretty impressive. And for some reason, which I didn't quite get, the fraction of structured data is actually increasing. So I'm not quite certain why that is. Uh, no, maybe because I would have thought it would actually unstructured. Most data, the 
most new data is unstructured, not structured. Although I guess you could consider tweets structured because the structures as being tweets. Anyway, this is um, an impressive graph and a challenge for all the world's disks to store. All right, that's the uh, little, little highlight from 2018, thank you. Here is uh, yet another plot of volume against zettabytes uh, with numbers from hundreds of zettabytes in size. And it makes, actually, it's useful because it tells you something. Namely, compared to it, here it has original data and replicated data. And we can see the replication is giving us a pretty big factor, maybe five or something like that. And um, so, um, given um, this was comes from actually a 2019 talk and goes up to 2018 reliably. And so that says actually it's a good reason why you might get different estimates from different people because not obviously you count replicated data, but also the amount of replication is pretty interesting. And so, um, and this comes from IDC. I haven't actually seen the original of this report, just Mary Mika's uh, report on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we come to a set of three slides by Bill Rue who is sort of VP for software, General Electric. Uh, and, and he's actually had that position for some time, because I think he still has that position in 2018. And it's sort of always interesting to look at GE, which is actually having a bit of a struggle at the moment doing what it says it's so good at here. Namely, it was a company uh, which uh, built giant things, aircraft engines, refrigerators, trains and stuff like that. Then it actually made a mistake and became a financial company of financing people buying machines. That was not a very distinguished record. Uh, but the machines are still very important. And equally important is that we need to have software defined machines. Machines that are driven by software, communicate with other machines using software, and standard communication mechanisms, messaging web services, APIs, and REST APIs, and so on. And they have a huge effort called the Industrial Internet of Things, which is devoted to this um, process of building the software environment called Predix, which um, links these uh, machines together. And we have a couple of slides um, following that on this that part of their work. Um, and this is basically intelligent machines, uh, to rhyme with intelligent systems engineering, which is our department. And that just says that we are doing AI-driven engineering because we're having intelligence built into the software of our systems. And that makes our refrigerator dynamically adapt to be more efficient, and the air conditioner do the same thing, and the train being very diligent and stopping at the right time and things like that. And this is, um, again, over the last 10 years has been a dominant trend, and it's extremely important. Here's a nifty uh, couple of slides from uh, Bill Rue, who's the vice president of software for GE. They have a software division in Silicon Valley. He has about a thousand people in it nowadays. Builds the software called Predix, which is their Internet of Things software. And in 2012, which is when this talk was given, Twitter was 80 gigabytes per day, and GE gas turbines had lots of monitors pouring data back to the GE cloud. And uh, that data volume is seven times larger than Twitter. So this shows the industrial internet. This is, the industrial internet is a pretty important concept. There's also IIoT, I, 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 industrial internet of things, which uh, put, captures all the things which are on the internet of industrial importance. And so they're monitoring these 25,000 engines. And uh, they analyze them to try to um, understand and um, 
and possible problems and be ready when the aircraft lands to mend those problems. So this is uh, pretty important in getting um, greater safety and more efficient maintenance.